Namaste Saraswati Devi Vang Gaudavani Picharine Nirvishay Sasunyavari Astyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Turugas Jat Kripa Sindhu Deva Japatitanam Pavanegyo Vaishnavegyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So as we have been keeping a certain pace with the uh, regular uh, discussion uh, on the holy name. So this will be another installment. We'll again uh, explore a little bit about the glories of the holy name, the process of chanting the holy name and the exclusive position of the holy name within the process of bhakti. So um, we can do that by placing one verse up. It's from the sixth canto, third chapter, verse number 22. Uh -huh. Now this chapter is following the chapters about Ajahnmyo and this particular section is where the Yamadudas have been foiled or blocked in their attempt to grab the soul of the of, uh, Ajamiya and bring him to the uh, their uh, master Yamaraj for punishment. Now Yamaraj, he's going to explain to them a little bit more about religious principles which they're not aware of. The Yamadutas are thinking that Yamaraj is the supreme deity in existence. They don't know that he works under the direction of the supreme personality of Godhead. Um, he is very powerful. He's probably one of the most powerful of all the demigods. Uh, in fact, sometimes he is called the second super soul in the sense that uh, he knows the uh, sinful and pious activities of all living entities. That knowledge is only given, only known by Krishna within the heart as Paramatma and Lord Shiva. The third person is Yamaraj. There's no fourth person who has that power of knowledge. So in order to do his service, he has received that power so he can designate who gets punished and how they get punished after leaving their body. And so here, now the Yamadutas are coming back and they are a little, not little, but they're very confused. How was it possible that we were acting on your order and now we have been thwarted in our service. 
and they want to know more. So they're asking Yamaraj. So in a series of verses, he's explaining. And in this particular verse, he sort of culminates his explanation. Devotional service, beginning with the chanting of the holy name, is the ultimate religious principle for the living entity in human society. Srila Prabhupada's purport. As stated in the previous verse, Dharma Bhagavatam, real religious principles are Bhagavad Dharma. The principles described in Srimad Bhagavatam itself or in Bhagavad Gita, the preliminary study of Bhagavatam. What are these principles? The Bhagavatam's Dharma, Projito, Kaita, Votra. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no, no cheating religious systems. Everything in the Bhagavatam is direct, directly connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhagavatam further says, Savai Pum Sam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhaktir Ahoksajay. The supreme religion is that which teaches his followers how to love the supreme personality of Godhead who is beyond the reach of experimental knowledge. Such a religious system begins with Tam Nama Graha, Grahana, chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smarnam Bhavasavanam. After chanting the holy name of the Lord and dancing in ecstasy, one gradually sees the form of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord, and the transcendental qualities of the Lord. This way, one fully understands the situation of the personality of Godhead. One can come to this understanding of the Lord, how he descends into the material world, how he takes his birth, and what his activities what activities he performs, but no one can know this only by only can know this by executing executing devotional service. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhakti Mama Vijanati, simply by devotional service, one can understand everything about the Supreme Lord. If one fortunately understands the Supreme Lord in this way, the result is Taktwa Deham Punan Janma Naiti. Halfway to giving up this material body, he has no longer to take birth in the material world. Instead, that person returns back to Godhead, the ultimate perfection. Therefore, Krishna says, Mam Peta Punar Janma Dukalya Mashashvatam Napnubanti Mahatmanaha Samsiddim Paramam Gataha. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. So in this verse, um, two things are highlighted here that uh, human society has many, many activities <laughs> and political, social, economical, medical, uh, there are a whole series of listings of what goes on in the material world. But something that is not material is given special position as the topmost of all activities. And that is the performance of devotional service. So as this verse says that in human society, the highest principle is devotional service. So there no one cannot uh, achieve any kind of lasting result in anything they perform in any category of material life unless they primary or put forth first the importance of devotional service in one's life. In fact, all other activities pale in comparison to devotional service because devotional service is the nature of the human being. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sadhu Kambu Moi, 
Sari Savanari Siddhi Chitte Kori Doi. So devotional service or love of God, which is the principle that is devotional service, as it says here, Savai Pum Son Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Ahoksajay. Devotional service or that supreme religion teaches people how to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the highest perfection of human existence. So in that, by exclusively uh, positioning devotional service above all other activities, one understands that um, this is the only success in life. And it's perfection of success because it automatically fulfills all desires eternally and completely. That means there's one doesn't aspire for anything else because everything is there within devotional service. Now, what we have here in this statement by Yamaraj is that he's talking now about the essence of devotional service, that activity which makes devotional service so glorious. It is already glorious, but the chanting of the holy names of the Lord brings one to the stage, as Prabhupada says here, of seeing the Lord, his pastimes, and his qualities. And then one comes to the full understanding of the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. So this chanting of the holy names of the Lord cannot be compared in any sense, even within the category of devotional service. It is exclusive, it is supreme, and it is the foundation for success in the process of devotional service. Everything exists on the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So when one understands this principle of the exclusiveness, one will give this activity priority. When something becomes so important, it becomes prioritized amongst everything else. And the prioritization is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord as the means for self-realization. Bhakti is filled with various activities, but the essence of bhakti is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And as one reaches the stages of higher and higher levels of bhakti, as they progress through the process, this, there, there occurs spontaneous and natural attraction for chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> And that will continue unlimitedly. One will taste the happiness and power of the, of the holy name, and one will only chant more and more and more. To come to that stage, we have the process of bhakti, <laughs> which harness, helps us to delineate and to discriminate on how to exclusivize chanting Hare Krishna and how to maximize the quality of one's chanting in such a way. So the chanting is also known as the mercy manifestation of the Lord. Goloka Premadana Harinam Sankirtan Ratin Jan Milo Kene Upai Dinahina Chata Chilo Harinam Udarila Tar Shakti Jagai and Madai. So this chanting of the holy names of the Lord has come into the material world from the spiritual world. It is descending. It is nam, uh, nam uh, avatar. Kali kale nam arupa krishna avatar nam ahoite hayasarva jagat mistara. This verse explains that the holy name of the Lord is a manifestation of Krishna in sound vibration it's not an, actually, it's not a manifestation. It is Krishna who is taking the form of sound vibration. And he appears in this world 
to uplift jug eyes and mud eyes. That means those who are engaged in materialistic activities as the goal of life. And so in order to get the full mercy of chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the process of bhakti is needed. Although the holy name is independent and exclusive, still it is supported. Mm -hmm. Just like if you want to, uh, if you want to cook some food and you have to have some fire in order to do it. So you might light a match and put your pot right above the match along with the food in there. But how long will it take for that, ma for that food to cook? It may take 300 years. In other words, that kind of flame will not do the job. <laughs> Similarly, in the process of bhakti, there are also elements that are uh, foundational in helping us to chant the holy names of the Lord. Some of these refer to other activities of bhakti, and some of them refer to the holy name themselves. The ones that refer to the holy name themselves is that the holy name should be chanted with complete attention. What is that attention? Maximizing the hearing process. So we call it Harinam Yagya. It's a sacrifice because in this age, uh, Krishna, Krishna Varna, Tusa Krishna, Sangopanga Suparsidam, Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai, Yajanti Hi Sumbeda Saham. And so in this age, Yagyai Prayai, it is the sacrifice of this age. And so there, therefore, there is nothing more exclusive in bringing one to the stage of perfection and chanting the holy names of the Lord. But as we mentioned, there are elements of support that are foundational. And one of them is that one should understand that the process of bhakti or the process of chanting is a yagya. Although it is known as something that is very pleasant, that pleasant tree or the pleasant nature of the chanting of the holy name comes continuously as we progress in devotional service, as we progress in chanting the holy names with quality and with attention. Things that we should avoid in chanting the holy names of the Lord are mentioned as the 10 offenses to the holy name, along with the 11th offense, which is inattention. So devotees generally struggle with this one. This inattention comes in the form of thinking of other things and therefore the holy name is being chanted, but it's not being, it's not given any attention. The sound vibration is being minimized by the thoughts of our absorption. Uh, distraction, this is called distraction. And then again, uh, lack of enthusiasm. Chanting simply for numerical, to fulfill numerical vows. In other words, if I get my 16 rounds done, that is good. But it is understood that we can get 16 rounds finished, but that doesn't mean we gain anything or even something if we are chanting what is called, um, what is that? Uh, it's called lackadaisical, but with no enthusiasm, just allowing the mind to go anywhere and everywhere. The sound vibration somehow or other is somewhere in the background, but that's about all. Yeah. Aldakshina, it's called. It means uh, uh, laziness, lack of enthusiasm, uh, indifference mm -hmm. to the chanting. 
it becomes routine, it becomes mechanical, it becomes something that that uh, is necessary, but that's about all. I give it, I give it some necessities, but that's all. One should chant, of course, Prabhupada would say, the chant with, we have a tongue and we have an ear. Well, one should actively hear, and there's where the mind comes in. Uh, if the mind, the mind's duty is simply to keep the hearing process steady. It's not that the mind has to do anything. In fact, the mind takes the background. But what it does, it becomes a guard against anything else that comes in. And one simply focuses on the process of hearing. And as one continuously absorbs themselves in continuous hearing, the sound vibration is powerful because it's Krishna himself. It awakens devotion within the heart. It inspires the mind with knowledge. It uproots material desires, purifies one's existence, uh, pushes back all forms of material suffering. Uh, there are unlimited, as Lord Chaitanya gave in the first verse of the Shikshastikas, uh, uh, so many benedictions that the holy name awakens or provides. So, but we have to also follow the rest of the bhakti process. As Prabhupada mentioned, and he said, if you're chanting, but you're not following the bhakti process, it goes back to that example I gave you with the match in cooking. He says, you're cooking with smoke. You won't get any results from your cooking like that. So in the same way, we have to follow the process and therefore there are principles, rules and regulations which are supportive. You have to understand these are supportive. They're not, they're not um, exclusive. They support our consciousness and our lifestyle by solidifying our consciousness towards spiritual uh, mindsets. In other words, we start to developing a spiritual mindset. When and when we chant, then the holy name will respond much faster. Or... So this is, um, these things are also necessary. So one of the things that is required, not required, actually it's optional, but it's a nice option. When Srila Prabhupada was talking about kirtan, he mentions that we should chant the Panchatattva Mantra, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Srivasari, Gaur, Bhakti Vrindu, before we chant Hare Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, along with his associates, are the mercy manifestations of this age in order to bring about the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. They introduced it, they practiced it, and they spread it everywhere. So therefore we have to chant this mantra. Of course, Prabhupada never said to chant it before Japa. It's not like it's a requirement, but it's a nice, uh, Somehow devotees have adopted that, and it's a nice uh, preview of mercy that, pre that precedes the chanting of the Holy Name. And that's only required once at the beginning of our japa like that. But try to actively hear. I use the word active because active means that I'm making an effort to hear. I'm not simply lackadaisical and the sounds are coming out and that's all I do. No, we have to actively hear the holy name. Just like the ear is an instrument. That's all. It's, an, it's a physical instrument. But the mind is connected with the soul and therefore 
when the mind is actively hearing the sound vibration coming through the ear, the soul is becoming inundated with that sound and it's becoming what we say uplifted. <laughs> uplifted. So active chanting. And we have to practice that. And here it also mentions dancing. Prabhupada says when you chant and dance in ecstasy, sometimes devotees think dancing is a little bit outside of their, you know, <laughs> routine. And they see it very something that they, they don't want to do, can't do, or think it's not necessary. But dancing does something it brings you to happiness immediately. Prabhupada said, when you dance, you feel happy. <laughs> Simply by dancing. So the dancing itself, I remember when I was, even before I joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was reading one spiritual book. It was by an anonymous person, but it was pretty good. It was a good, interesting book. And then the very end of the book, he said, the highest expression of happiness is to dance. <laughs> is that, and that, that fits within our category of activities that we simply sing and we also dance. And uh, even if you don't know how to dance, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Krishna will see that you're trying to express your devotion in the form of dancing because it's part of our process. And he will be pleased. And if Krishna is pleased, then that's all we need to know. We need to concern ourselves with. And so this process of chanting should be done regularly. It should also be done early. Now, um, of course, we hear 16 rounds each day. And that's the injunction. But if possible, in other words, if there, if we can somehow or other arrange our schedule where we can chant our rounds the first thing in the morning, aside from everything else, after we take care of our bodily needs, after waking up, then we do that day after day after day after day after day. Naturally, with the effort we make to hear and chant nicely, there will be a nice taste awakening from that. And the holy name, and some of us might experience, well, I'm chanting the holy name, but I'm not tasting anything. But if you continue to chant the holy name, the holy name will reveal to you, this is an important point, they will reveal to you what you need to do to awaken that taste, what you need to stop, what you need to add on, what consciousness you may have to need to adopt. The holy name will also inform you how to chant. But the holy name also gives transcendental knowledge along with uh, the process of connecting ourselves with Krishna through the holy name of the Lord. So taking this verse in its essence, we can't find any greater statement than this, that out of all the activities of human society, bhakti, devotional service is the highest. And within that process, the chanting of the holy name remains exclusive. Tan namah It begins there and it ends there chanting the holy name, just like when Srila Prabhupada was traveling, he got stopped by one reporter. I believe it was in New York. And reporters would come to the airport on the request of the devotees to meet Srila Prabhupada. So he would come from his previous destination and he would sometimes meet reporters in the airport. And one reporter asked, he said, Swamiji, what do you get from this chanting? Obviously, he was thinking of something material. Prabhupada said, we get chanting from chanting. 
we get chanting from chanting. In other words, the chanting becomes uh, purifying, and as it becomes purifying, the devotee wants to chant more and more and more. Uh, I was just reading from Shiva Ram Maharaj's book called Chant More, which is a series of articles. And he said, make an experiment. Do this one day. Uh, he didn't, he didn't give any time, but he said, just do it. He said, get up at 12 o'clock midnight and chant the whole day till the next midnight, 24 hours, just chant. <laughs> now that might sound impossible for many of us, but the summer months are here. We also have some vacation time. We uh, can minimize some of our responsibilities and uh, Go on and just chant, chant, chant. Or mm, we can also use the Akadasi, which is today. At least where I am today is the Akadasi. Uh, chant more and more. Um, I was just listening to one senior devotee speaking yesterday. He was saying every Akadasi he chants 64 rounds. Mm -hmm. And he concluded by saying, it's a whole different experience. What you experience when you chant 16 rounds is nothing compared to what you experience when you chant 64 rounds. You're entering a whole different realm of spiritual existence. And so it is an austerity. It requires effort, requires time. And we might also say, some determination, putting other things aside. But it brings the higher taste, and that's what we're looking for. The higher taste of Krishna consciousness is found when chanting the holy name. Um, the holy name, iti sodash sakam nam nam kali kamasan nasanam nata paratiyo payo sarva veda shudrishyate Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This verse from the Kali Santara Upanishads says that, you know, you can go and search through all the Vedic literatures. All the, all the four Vedas, the Puranas, the Shrutis, the, the Shritis, the Upanishads, the Puranas, the itihasas, the dharma shastras, whatever makes up the Vedas, all the different branches of the Vedas, you can search all these and you will never find a more direct, sublime and uh, powerful process of self-realization in this age of Kali than chanting these 16 names of the, whole, of the Lord. So the Vedas, which are coming from Krishna himself. The Vedas are called a Parusha. Parusha means they're not man-made. They're made by the Lord himself and they come through the pure devotees who present these, their realizations through Vedic knowledge. So um, we have something very wonderful. <laughs> And because, and because we somehow do it every day, the wonder somehow becomes lost and it, it recategorizes itself as something routine, something that I must do. But the holy name is the panacea, as Prabhupada said, for all ills in this age of Kali. Whatever your problem is, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's all. Chanting of the holy name will elevate our consciousness above the material modes of nature where all problems exist. As we transcend the modes of material nature, connect with the holy name, then whatever problems we have are no longer problems anymore. Of course, sometimes we come down and we start thinking, mm, well, yeah, I still got that problem. But 
So the our real problem is that we don't have enough enthusiasm, desire, or understand how important it is to chant the holy names with the with the desire, with with the with the knowledge, with the knowledge that there is nothing better I can do in life. <laughs> And chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. So this verse is uh, quite powerful, spoken by Yamaraj himself. So we'll stop here and see if there's any questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for enlightening me on this topic. Wonderful, Maharaj. Thank you. I request you, what is, if there are any questions, comments, realization, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Prabhu, uh, Maharaj, thank you very much for again restarting uh, the, the theme of uh, chanting of the holy names. This verse is so profound and powerful. So thank you very much for this selecting this verse. Maharaj, I have a question. Um, uh, can you explain a little bit about Nam Abhas? Nam Abhas? Yeah, Nam Abhas is the reflection of the, or a, what's the word, not reflection, but it's a, a faint glimmer of the glories of the Holy Name. It's the stage of clearing. It's the second stage. We go from Nama Parad to Nama Bas, and we go to Nama Nam. Nama Bas means uh, analogy is given that when we're chanting Nama Parad, there's hardly any taste in chanting. But when we start getting free from Nama Parad, we start tasting the sweetness of the Holy Name. And the analogy is given. Just like uh, the sun has risen in the sky, but there are clouds. So the sun is blocked by the clouds. But sometimes through the clouds, there's a ray of sunlight that comes through. So that is compared to Namabas, that the ray of the holy name, the sun-like holy name, is filtering through the atmosphere of our consciousness and giving us a a taste of chanting the holy name. Now that's dealt with uh, quite extensively in Madhurya Kandambini, where Namabhas is given a particular section of that Shastra and it's explained in detail. Um, there's two kinds of Namabhas. One is uh, Chaya Namabhas, and there's another one. I can't remember the other technical name. Um, one is Mayavadi, and the other one is uh, Vaishnava. Um, but basically, we call it the clearing stage, a glimmer of the holy name's power. Um, and that is reached when we consciously know and avoid the offenses. So one should not, therefore Prabhupada said the whole process of chanting is to chant Hare Krishna, avoid the offenses. He said, if you're chanting Hare Krishna, but you're not consciously trying to avoid the offenses, then your chanting won't result with any, anything much. One has to be consciously aware of what are the offenses and how to avoid them. 
And as we are consciously participating in this mood of removing the offenses, or avoiding the offenses, we're moving into the stage of namabas. namabas. Another example of namabas is uh, Ajamil. When Ajamil called out for his son when he was dying, he called the, the, uh, his son, but he actually called his son, who was named Narayan, he called the holy name of Narayan. So he didn't chant in Sudanam, and he didn't chant in Nama Parad. He chanted in Nam Bas, unknowingly knowing that this name was, you know, he called for his son, but the name is the name. The name is the name of the Lord. And when he heard himself call his own son's name, Narayan, the sound of him hearing himself calling the name of his son, which was Narayan, produced an awareness of Krishna or Narayan. He actually remembered Narayan at that time, but he didn't call for Narayan, he called for his son. So that chanting was Nama Bas. It wasn't pure Sudanam. And it wasn't Nama Parad because, you know, he was simply calling in a helpless way. Mm -hmm. So we can um, explore deeper some of the points of Nama Bas, but um, if you want to go deeper into it, I suggest you can read a little bit more on uh, Bhakti Tirta Swami Maharaj has also done a book called Madhurya Kandambini, where he's delineated the main points in a lecture type presentation, later on put into a form of a book. So in that presentation, you'll find many interesting points on Nama Bas. And of course, Madhurya Kandambini is the place where you can find the, the most information on Nama Bas. Non Madhurya Kandambini, Kandambini is by Vishwanar Chakravarti Thakur. Thank you, Maharaj. That's a little bit about Nama Bas. Thank you. It's very clear. But I think what you said is also very important that, and I think we know, we all know this, but consciously it needs to be worked upon the offenses, how we avoid those offenses. Otherwise, it doesn't have any, that, e that effect. Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives us a formula. He says that by following the 11th offense, in other words, by avoiding inattention, we will avoid the tendency to commit the other 10 offenses is reduced drastically and practically completely. Inattentive chanting will cause us to become more susceptible or more inclined to commit the other offenses. But if we can ch chant attentively or endeavor to chant attentively, then we can minimize the tendency to commit offenses. Tend offenses are committed uh, consciously or unconsciously. But in both cases, we have to avoid them. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare you. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. This is Prem Kishori. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. I goes to Prabhupada then. I goes to you. Um, Guru Maharaj, my question is a follow-up of your last statement. Um, I know that I have heard your lecture on antidotes of inattention, but uh, if I may please request you to uh, tell uh, antidotes of inattention. Uh, means ways that we can avoid inattention? Yes, Guru Maharaj. 
Well, there, there are some many senior devotees along with Srila Prabhupada who has given us some hints that we can, uh, you know, follow that, to help us avoid that. Uh, one of the ones that I find is the most effective is very carefully concentrate on the first Hare in the mantra. Make sure your mind is attuned to hearing that. And that will help you and will facilitate attention through the rest of the mantra. That's one, that's one thing. And of course, uh, if we're living at home, we should have an area of the place where there's the least amount of distraction. And there's the least amount of um, opportunities to look around and see the day-to-day -day items of our life and somehow or other click on you know, the, the duties that we have in relationship to the environment we live in. <laughs> so therefore, it's better to go to a temple or find a, a place in your home where you can sit down. Of course, it's also recommended to sit very nicely, straight back, uh, beads held up towards the chest and uh, close your eyes and then chin. Um, closing eyes helps, but it also, we should not stay closed all the time because sometimes the mind's thoughts become stronger when the eyes are closed as opposed to when they're open. So then therefore you have to intermittently open your eyes. But I think closing the eyes does help to ward out any distractions. And it helps us to focus much easier on the sound vibration, which is the essence of chanting. Uh, makes, uh, what I do is that I shut my cell phone off when I begin my rounds and I leave it off until I'm done chanting. Doesn't matter who's calling, you know, doesn't matter, you know, the mind will. If you leave your phone on and you hear all those messages coming, you're thinking, oh, I have to see what message is coming. It may be important. Like that. And so don't, don't use the phone and don't let the phone use you either. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> There's no yeah. other, so just turn it off. <laughs> That's all. You can't keep it on any other, any other, just turn it off. <laughs> I like it in the Guru Maharaj, don't let the phone use you. <laughs> it will, <laughs> if it has the chance. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Which deities are those? Uh, Guru Maharaj Radha Govinda in Iskan Mangaluru. Iskan what? Mangaluru, India. Iskan Mangalore. Mangalore? Oh. Mangalore. Yes. Yeah, oh, Mangalore. Okay. Iskan Mangalore. Okay, beautiful duties too. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Send me a picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, very happily I'll send. Hare Krishna. Mm Hare Krishna. Anyone has any question, comment, or realization? Please go ahead.
Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you again for reminding us about the importance of uh, really deepening our chanting. I would like to know how to increase our faith in the process of chanting. By reading about the glories of the holy name. By hearing about the glories of the holy name. By associating with people who are attached to chanting the holy name. Hmm. The, the Bhagavatam is full of verses, especially in the sixth canto. There's many, many verses. That same chapter we read from, you continue in that same chapter. You will find verse after verse on the glories of the Holy Name. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. I find I tend to become quite mechanical, exactly the words you use, because it's a daily affair and we do it on a regular basis. It almost, uh, you know, you don't realize how important it is to really keep focusing on improvement all the time. It's not a one day affair, two day affair. It's a daily endeavor to get better at chanting, but it tends to slip because you become mechanical. So I really think uh, the warning you gave that not to become mechanical is very important. Thank you mm -hmm. for reminding us about that. Yeah, association helps. Mm. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hey, Krishna. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. We can uh, end here. Okay, Maharaj. Right, before I end, I'd like to make, make a statement on a completely different subject. Um, uh, of course, not everyone is aware, but or, and everyone doesn't know uh, one of our dear God brothers and God sisters is Johnny Kinath from London, uh, Brahmachari, he's been struggling with cancer for about five years now. And so um, I received a message the other day, yesterday, that his situation is worsening. So uh, we request, seriously request the devotees to offer some prayers to Janaki Nath, those who don't know him um, uh, can find out more about him from many devotees who really know him quite good. There's many who are with us today who know him really well. Um, Sri Devi, she knows him quite well. Um, and there's so many other devotees uh, um, Tushar and Shilpa and uh, well I think Prem Kishori she also knows him Shamarani, Madan Gopal Vishnu Priya uh, who else Manjuali uh, Satyabhama for sure Archana City uh, these, these are all the devotees that know him, Madhavananda, Mohanasini, Radha. These are the names that I'm seeing online today. 
So yeah, he's only 36 years old and he's, he could leave his body any time. You know, the, the prognosis is worsening. So um, I'll know some more about his situation tomorrow and I'll keep devotees up, but we would request because the prayers of the devotees are very important. And Srila Prabhupada taught us how to pray. He said, we shouldn't demand anything from Krishna. We should request Krishna and explain what is our desire. And he said, when Prabhupada was also sick and the devotees wanted to pray to Prabhupada, Krishna for Prabhupada, Prabhupada gave us the way to pray. He said, my dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, please heal our spiritual master. Uh, my dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, please bring Janaki, ba Janaki Nath back to good health. So if you so desire is an essential part of the prayer. Krishna always, Krishna's plans are always perfect, but he also is moved by the prayers of, his, of the devotees. So we want to uh, show our concern for Janaki Nath. He has a, a wonderful future ahead of him. He has, he's such a powerful, influential preacher. Uh, when I used to travel with him together, we would share the different uh, classes. He would give class and I would give class. We would share back and forth. And uh, he, he is, his class giving is, was so, so, um, what's the word? Interesting that people would walk out of the class and the, the whole room would be buzzing with energy. He's, uh, he had a, a he, he could speak the philosophy in such an interesting way and engage each and every person in the class to participate in the discussion in one form or another. He was very, uh, what we say, clear on how to bring people in to Krishna consciousness in any particular way. Unfortunately, for some reason, He's been put into this difficult health situation. So just we request the devotees to pray, like I mentioned. Um, if you, my dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, please cure Janaki Nath. Or you can even become more specific, my dear Lord, my dear Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda, for the presiding deities at the Bhaktivedanta Manor in London, where he is presently staying, um, you can pray to them directly, Radha Kukulananda. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And uh, tomorrow we'll get into a topic on health. And we also explore this particular topic regularly because it's also an interest and it's important to remind ourselves not only of our physical health but spiritual health both together okay thank you Srila Prabhupada ki jai jai sankirtan ki jai jai thank you so much Maharaj for your time and association today thank you Hare Krishna Srila Prabhupada ki jai Hare Krishna Guru thank you Thank you, dear devotees, for joining. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We will pray for Sajanki Prabhu Guru Maharaj. Sajanki Bama, yeah. You can contact. Uh, you can contact Sutapa. He he's there with him. Okay. Sutapa or, or Roberto, both of them are taking care of him. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to go and visit him, uh, Guru Maharaj? See him in the. I would, I would suggest. That would be something you should do, and that would help a lot. Okay, would, Guru Maharaj. First, Maharaj. First, yeah, first contact the devotees before you come. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I'll contact Sutapa Prabhu and Robert to Prabhu Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. um, he's, Guru staying, Maharaj. he's staying on the, on the grounds of Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Vedanta Manor. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you. Guru Maharaj, uh, as a God family, maybe we can all come together online on Zoom and do Kirtan, praying for Janaki Nath Prabhu. Yeah. Um, go ahead and organize it and we can see when you can do it. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. 